so uh, I am going uh, this morning to present uh, data on the burning susceptibility of new hybrids of yam as related to their total phenolic content and then their phenolic profile. Um, this um, this uh, publication uh, is uh, as as co-author uh, myself as corresponding author and uh, my colleague uh, Dalila Petro who is with me today and uh, she is working also at Inrae Guadeloupe and the other contributors uh, come from the team of uh, Dr. Sylvain Guillot, who is located at INRAE at Lereux in France. He, he is from year the year. Today I'm going to introduce the, 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 the talk, uh, talking about uh, the huge decrease in yam production in the French West Indies, namely Martinique and Guadeloupe, and I'm going also to give some information concerning the selection of new hybrids resistant to disease. Concerning the material and methods, I am going to describe the plant material and the methods rapidly, briefly, the methods used to determine chemical composition and sensory analysis. Concerning the results, I will emphasize on the total phenolic content of new hybrids and on the phenolic profile determined using ILC uh, UV uh, chromatography uh, coupled, coupled to mass uh, spectrometry. Concerning the discussion, I will talk about the importance of warning after putting as a quality defect in yam. And I will emphasize the fact that phenolic profile differs with the variety. Then I will conclude. This uh, diagram shows the huge decrease in yam production in the French West Indies since the last uh, 30 years. This decrease is, is due to shifts in consumers' habits, but also to a yam disease called leaf anthracnose. Yam disease, this yam disease is due to a fungus named Coletotricum, and it is the major disease Dioscorea alata suffers from in the French West Indies. To cope with this uh, disease, in my Guadeloupe has been se selecting new hybrids tolerant and resistant to, to anthracnose since the, the 80s. But some of these new hybrids suffer a major quality defect, which is burning and cutting. Concerning materials and methods, the plant material where yams grown and harvested in Guadeloupe on Inrae site at Petit Bro. The measures were made on six cultivars of Alata, AL51, AL56, Caribinoa, Guadinoa, Inrakes, which are new hybrids, and a commercial variety named Cabuza. Five tubers per variety were used. Three of them were devoted to chemical composition and two were used for color, for measuring color attributes. Uh, the methods used are rapidly uh, described. Color attributes were measured using a chromometer. For sensory analysis, 18 trained panelists uh, weighted the global appreciation on a scale of one to five. Total phenolic content was measured using the Follens-Socalto method. 
and uh, CUV visible. Mass spectrometry was used either directly to determine simple phenolic compounds or after fluoroglucinolysis. This acidolysis aims to cut the tannin into subunits. Concerning the results, this, uh, the photograph shows browning at cutting for two varieties, Cabuza on the left end, which is uh, moderately uh, susceptible to browning, and on the right end, Inrakens, which is uh, highly susceptible to browning. And this photography were taken within 10 minutes after cutting. The table presents color attributes and phenolic content for the six cultivars uh, studied. The second column concerning phenolic content, total phenolic content, shows that uh, this parameter var varies from 20 to 150. Uh, within uh, the, the varieties. So there is a, a, a significant effect of the cultivar on the total phenolic content, intra Dioscorea alata species. On the third um, column, you have a, a parameter which is, which is called 100 less L which is the luminance. And the higher this uh, parameter is, the, most, the more severe is the browning at cutting. This parameter also shows variability linked to the cultivar. This second um, slide of results shows correlation in the table, correlations between color attributes and sensory analysis. If you look at the third column with luminance, you can see that there is a significant correlation between luminance and total phenolic content. It is a positive correlation. And there is a significant negative correlation between luminance and global appreciation. That means that the more severe is the browning and the, the lower is the global appreciation. The graph shows an example of chromatogram obtained at two, 280 nanometer. At this wavelength, all, all the phenolics are detected, but you can see that there, is numer there are numerous peaks and they are not all identified despite the use of mass spectrometry. Concerning this uh, table, it shows the identification and quantification of main simple phenolics directly measured uh, um, on, the, on the yam pulp of Inrakens and Cabuza. I have shown only the results concerning uh, the, the TANES, the procyanidine, which were and only the peaks which were uh, identified. If you look at the yellow figures, you can see that on line three, free catechin is present in uh, in Raquel's pulp, but not in Cabuza. And if you look at the line, the peak number five, you can see that concerning Procyanidine oligomer, and in particular this tetramer, there is no 
Posanidine tetramer in in rakens. Where where is? Uh, where is? Uh, there is uh, some uh, there is some tetramer posanidine in cabbage apple. Our data show that inrakens in re is rich in free catechin, which is highly susceptible to oxidation. And cabuza is richer in short, in short chain tannin called posanidine oligomers. Consequently, the profile of simple phenolics depends on variety. This is uh, uh, the last uh, table of results that I will present today. And it uh, concerns the composition of tannin after acidolysis in the presence of phlogoglucinol. If you, and uh, this table is uh, comparing in rakens and cabbage apple. If you um, look at the yellow figures, you can see that catechin, it's, it concerns a catechin in terminal subunit. You can see that inrakens is almost three times richer in catechin than cabuza, and it is known that catechin is susceptible to oxidation. On the contrary, Cabuza is Cabuza contains epicatechin, which is less susceptible to oxidation, whereas in Rakes has no epicatechin in terminal subunits. These results show that the tannin composition in su subunits depends on variety intra Dioscorea alata species. And this was uh, for us an important result. And we were very uh, surprised of this result. As a discussion, I can say that Inrakens is twice richer than Cabiza in total phenolic content. In Rakens contains free catechin, whereas Cabiza has no free catechin. Those two conditions um, can explain, can suggest why in Rakens is more susceptible to oxidation than Cabiza. Another result, important result, is that in Dioscorea lata, we found that the main phenolics were tannin, so uh, procyanidines in the whopper of yam. Moreover, there is a, a, differ, a difference between Inrakens and Cabuza for the composition of tannin. Cabuza have longer chain Procyanidines than, uh, than in Rakens, and as also five times more procyanidines than in Rakens. Those two conditions can suggest why Cabuza is less susceptible to oxidation than uh, in Rakens. So Cabuza has longer chain uh, procyanidine. The, the, the average degree of polymerization is eight for Cabuza and five for Inrakens. And Cabuza has also more uh, tannin than Inrakens. It is known that uh, tannin can inhibit uh, polyphenol oxidase uh, activity. As a conclusion, I, I think that the most uh, important results in this, uh, in this data is the significant positive correlation between browning 
and total phenolic content. The significant negative correlation between warning and global appreciation. We can also um, emphasis that warning and cutting of Dioscorea alata depends on both total phenolic content and phenolic profile. And fi um, above all, uh, finally, the tannate composition in, su and in subunits widely varies with variety within this species. We could try to go further and uh, we would like to, uh, to make some more profiling and to have uh, uh, phenolic profiling on a wider range of variety um, of variety and maybe of species to see if we can uh, extend uh, our our results to other varieties, in particular to commercial uh, variety of Diascorea alata. Uh, this work has been funded by the Guadeloupe region and Europe in the framework of a FEDER project named Agro Ecodiv. And the, we acknowledge the technical support of Marie-Laure Saint-Marc and Rosan Pichy. And I am going to thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Dominique, uh, for this presentation. Um, and uh, in particular for your clarity in sharing your, these results on behalf of the INRAE Guadeloupe team. So that's a very interesting proof of concept. Uh, so we now open the floor to questions. So feel free to write your questions in the chat box or uh, raise your hand. I see that there's a first question from Dominique in the chat box. Dominique is asking, uh, are there any quick tests or kits to measure the different phenolic compounds in order to screen the different YAM collections? So in, uh, let's say higher throughput uh, methods to, to measure the different phenolic compounds. What would be your recommendations? Um, from my opinion, the quicker uh, method that I know to, um, to measure uh, the phenolics is uh, the is the fullness local method. And I don't know uh, quicker uh, methods, but it is uh, not worthy that the correlation between uh, Brownian index, I didn't uh, show Brownian index, but it is a notation uh, on a one to five scale. And uh, the, there is a, well, a good correlation a significant correlation between total phenolic content and warning index. I don't know if uh, it's what you were expecting. Yes, it's uh, mainly to know if there is some quick test kits, something very easy to evaluate in the field, to evaluate the, the phenolic compounds. We have the browning, but on the biochemical, is there any kits to determine this uh, component? Do I you... cannot answer your question uh, more precisely because I don't know uh, quicker uh, methods than uh, okay. uh, for, uh, for yeah. but uh, maybe uh, there is a, a quicker method and uh, I have to to look after it. Okay, thank you, Dominique. There, there was a second question from Dominique. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what, is, what is the ecosystem related variability for the genotypes under study? So the impact of ecosystem, let's say, on the variability. On the variability of which parameter? 
Dominique? Um, of of polyphenol. Is there any influence of the ecosystem, the, the place, the age, the temperature on phenolic compounds for the same genotype? Okay, uh, so um, this does not appear in this study, but in the framework of uh, RTB food in uh, 2020, we have uh, compared for uh, ancient varieties of Dioscorea lata, the lo two locations in, in Rai Guadeloupe, uh, Petit Bourg, Duclos, and uh, Godet in, uh, in the north of, uh, of Guadeloupe. And these are two different locations uh, differing for uh, soil conditions and climatic conditions. And we, have, we, we saw important difference between phenolics uh, for, for between both locations for uh, phenolics content. If I can remember well, it is uh, 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 in Petit Bourg, uh, the total phenolic content is higher than in, uh, in Codet, but uh, there is also some interactions between uh, the location and the variety. All varieties do not uh, show the same response to location. Thank you. So before we go back to the chat box, Didier, you raised your hand. Uh, yes. Um, uh, Thank you very much, uh, Dominic, for your nice presentation. I'm very happy to see you and hearing from you again after several years uh, spent together in, in Guadeloupe. I'm also very Thank happy you. to see that AgroEcoDiv project is going well. So I have uh, one, uh, um, uh, I, want, I have a, um, an answer concerning the question uh, asked by Dominic. Uh, about the a quick uh, a quick method to measure uh, phenolic compounds. Uh, according to me, the, the only method that currently exists for measurement of uh, phenolic compound is uh, a biochemical method used by by, by Dominic. That is the, the the most rapid method that is currently exist. And uh, I have a question to Dominic. Uh, you present on only the, the, the phenolic profile from um, obtained with one wavelength at 218, right? Yes, Nana? that's right. Yeah. And uh, do, do you try to get some uh, a phenolic profile on other wavelengths, for example, 313 and 316? Um, so you know that in, uh, for example, in cassava, we did, we, we did that and we have different profiling, uh, uh, phenolic profile. Uh, yes, uh, we have tried to determine the phenolic profile also at uh, 350 nanometer. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is uh, specific to flavonol. Yeah. And uh, uh, we have uh, identified various uh, flavonol at this uh, wavelength. Mm. But um, I, I choose today not to present the results, but okay. the results are in the paper. And uh, the paper also shows for these flavonol differences between in Rakens and Cabuza pulp. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome, Didier. Thank you. So let's go back to the to the chat. Uh, question, I think, from Gérard. Gérard, uh, so you were asking for the 
cost of kits, but since for now, they apparently uh, Dominique doesn't know any kits. So let's go to your second question. Um, did the analyzed materials, so the YAM clones, come from experimental plots on station or from farmer trials? Uh, all the plant material were produced at INRA, uh, INRA Guadeloupe site in experimental conditions uh, as uh, it concerns new hybrids and uh, selected by uh, INRA and those new hybrids are not all uh, available for producer. I will uh, give the Okay, so uh, that's uh, the limit of, uh, of the new hybrids study. They are not uh, available, all available for producers for now. Thank you. I hope it, it answers your question, Gerard. Um, yeah, it's okay. Thank you very much, Atlanti. Mm -hmm. Welcome. A question from Toyin. Is it possible to find correlations between the A values, so from the uh, Color International Assessment System, so the A values and phenolic contents? Any correlations? Um, I cannot uh, answer this question as I have the figures, but I didn't uh, measure calculate the correlation, but I, I, I can do it as uh, the, the measures were recorded. Okay, Toyin, do you want to feedback on this? Any suggestion? Yeah, yes, yeah. Uh, my thinking was just that uh, since the CIE color system uh, defines um, the A value as a degree of uh, redness, uh, redness, uh, greenness, redness on the negative uh, axis and greenness on the positive axis. Perhaps the degree of redness, which I think can be represented as brownness in a uh, yam, could be kind of correlated with phenolic concentration in a uh, yam. And if there is a positive, uh, high positive correlation, uh, perhaps it can be used as a rapid system to, to screen uh, 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 yam genotypes by using handheld kilometers. Um, if I can add something, um, in our uh, study, all the, all the varieties had uh, white or cream uh, pulp. And the correlation between total phenolic content and a, the A me measure, which is in the publication, is less significant than the correlation between total phenolic content and the luminance, uh, the luminance uh, parameter. So I think that the, the A uh, parameter can be interesting if you have a variety in the pulp color, if they are not all of the same color. Huh? Okay, thank you very much. A question from uh, Michael. So Michael is asking, can we use Browning index as an indicator of total phenolics or do we need more varieties to establish if there's any relationship between Browning index and total phenolics? In our study with six uh, cultivars, uh, the correlation between warning index and uh, total phenolics was not significant. So I think that uh, our results would need to be cons consolidated uh, with uh, a wider range of varieties. Yes, you are right. Michael, do you, need, do you want to feed back to, to what uh, Dominique just said? Any comments? Yeah, thanks, thanks, Senglaitan, and uh, thanks to Dominique for the good uh, uh, presentation. 
So uh, now we, if uh, branding index is, uh, if we are able to establish uh, that uh, correlation with uh, total phenolics, I think uh, it might be an indirect uh, approach uh, to 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 determine uh, what the what uh, is re really responsible for the for the uh, for the color changes. I have seen some uh, other studies on uh, some fruits where uh, there is a relationship, I mean, correl good correlation between branding index and the uh, total phenolics. So like uh, Dominic said, maybe if we throw in more varieties, uh, we might be able to investigate uh, this properly. Thank you. Yes, I, I, I agree with you. Thank you very much, Michael. Very good. Um, Noel is actually asking a question of clarification. Um, what is the difference between 100 minus L and Brown in index? Um, Browning index is a notation by panelists, trained panelists, uh, on a scale of uh, one to five. And uh, luminance parameter, L parameter, is measured by um, a coma meter. So it is, uh, it is supposed to be more accurate so it is more accurate than the burning index, from my opinion. Okay, thank you. I, I understand now. Uh, we have uh, we used to use a uh, hundred minus uh, L as a indicator of burning index as a burning index. That is uh, instrumental. So you measure uh, uh, another burning index using a. Uh, Pardon, uh, I don't yes. understand. Uh, uh, now I understand. Okay. Thank yes, you. Uh, that's true. I, I, I got through the Borman index and I didn't explain uh, maybe uh, the, um, accurately uh, what it was, the difference between the two parameters. Yes. Okay, I understand. Thank you very much. And uh, Noel was also mentioning in the box that uh, catechin uh, is the main phenolics in the browning process of yam products. Uh, he also precised that uh, together with Christian Mestre, they observed that this compound um, has a, a major effect on the browning of yam chips. Yam chips. Yes, I think that uh, the the publication from uh, Christian and Noel is cited in the references of the article. And that's actually uh, very well linked to Bella's question. Uh, Bella is asking, is a specific polyphenol like tannins or any other maybe uh, correlated to browning rather than looking at total polyphenol content? So do we should, should we look at a specific polyphenol? Uh, or rather than um, looking at the total polyphenol content? Um, I, I think that uh, uh, it's, it would be possible to uh, calculate a correlation between catechin uh, on one end and uh, tannin on the other end. Uh, with uh, burning intensity, but in our conditions, we didn't have we didn't have uh, enough repetition, uh, enough tubers used for uh, uh, for uh, LC UV visible, and we could not establish this co correlation. That's why. Uh, uh, I didn't speak about it. It has to be uh, to be evaluated. It has to be repeated, and uh, also um, uh, SAUV UV uh, detection is uh, longer and needs uh, some uh, experiment experience. Uh, more experience 
than uh, total phenol content. And you need a, a, a mass uh, spectrometer. That's why we did, that's why uh, tannin composition and cation composition uh, were measured uh, in the, the team of Dr. Sid Van Guyot in France, as we don't have spectrometer, uh, mass spectrometer. Mass. Yeah. Bella, I see you may be willing to say something more. Yeah, no, no. I, I, I'm, I'm, I understand that it's not possible to, to calculate it based on these data. But I, I also I also see that the, the 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 type of tannins you have short and, and long chain tannins and and the long chain seem to be less uh, vulnerable to oxidation or so that there's probably all kind of interaction between those polyphenols or so there should be there should be an index maybe to be calculated from from. The, the different combinations and contents of the different polyphenols. What I can add is that uh, there is uh, little knowledge about uh, the composition, tannin composition of uh, yeah. of the pulp of yam. So yeah. uh, further, further work is needed. It's more known for wine, I think. <laughs> French one. It looks like there's a last question from Dominique in the box. Are uh, geneticists working on markers for catechin pathways uh, for uh, genomic purposes? I will uh, let my colleague Dalila Petro answer to Dominique. <laughs> um, good morning, afternoon, I don't know. So I'm, uh, I'm the breeder who worked on the hybrid and uh, it's what we think to do uh, to do some uh, genetic analysis uh, about uh, this uh, grounding because it's really a major let's say quality defect so we think uh, in doing this work but for now uh, is not stopped and the answer is it enough for you yes yes you have a a, a nice uh, research uh, to develop there to be able yes. to, to have fast selection. So thank you very much uh, for this very, very educational presentation. It was really, really interesting and really interesting um, proof of concept. So thank you very much. And um, it was a really, it, le it was actually, it led to a very dynamic discussion. So thank you. Thank you very much.